Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so bristles of uh, bristle worms are name giving features of polychaetes. Also, uh, this is a vast class of uh, annelids that live in the ocean and uh, you can find them in uh, all ecological niches. Uh, differently from flies, bristles, uh, they have uh, they are morphologically complex and they have submicron uh, features such as uh, uh, teeth and uh, features of the joint. Um, so this uh, the development starts early in the larva. This is a day three larva scanning electron micrograph on the left of the screen. And you can see these hair-like structures protruding from the appendages of the animal, and these are the bristles. Uh, their morphogenesis occurs inside a follicle, um, an epithelial invagination, um, uh, according to an additive construction principle and uh, basal apposition of material on one end only. So uh, essentially, there's a, a bottom in a uh, at the bottom of this follicle is a, a single cell that is dedicated for the production of these bristles called ketoblast, and this cell is capable of conveying information about the morphology and at the same time provide um, uh, the major constituent of the bristle uh, um, during the morphogenesis. So we identified chitin synthase 3 as essential gene for the bristle biogenesis. And the first hint uh, came from uh, um, a treatment that we did using a drug called nicomycin Z, which is a general inhibitor of, of chitin synthase. And you can see that the larva treated with this drug is, is, is completely naked and uh, are lacking the bristles. Um, we localized the messenger RNA of chitin synthase 3 by hybridization chain reaction, and we uh, can detect the uh, messenger RNA inside the ketoblast, um, which, is, which are emanating uh, the bristles labeled by we germ agglutinin, which is an agglutinin that binds to chitin. Uh, so this means that the uh, uh, ketoblast is the uh, contributor of the uh, main material. And we uh, performed the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing. Uh, uh, and we can see that these uh, larvae that were depleted for uh, chitin synthase 3 are uh, developed uh, lacking uh, bristles. And this specific uh, larva that you can see in the image had a deletion of four base pairs on one allele and 13 base pairs on the other allele. And, um, and you can see in the agarose gel, that we uh, amplified by PCR to locus, and uh, the only the uh, larva that were microinjected for uh, guides RNA against chitin synthase three resist to the digestion uh, by SAU three AI, which is a restriction site that is found in the region that we targeted by um, the guides RNA. So um, we next looked at the morphology or how is the morphology conveyed to the bristles. And uh, this, what you see here uh, is a refractive index micrograph of a day three uh, bristle. And it has this uh, uh, typical um, organization of, of the bristle structure with the blade, with the joint and shaft parts. Uh, this, this is a common organization that you find in the bristles of uh, bristle worms. Um, and uh, you can see also that each individual part have uh, a um, uh, have some micron features such as uh, teeth on the uh, blade part, uh, collar and boss on the joint part, and diaphragms inside the shaft. We correlated the uh, synthesis of these individual parts to the uh, uh, transformations occurring on the surface of the ketoblast. And we, we essentially see that um, the ketoblasts form microvilli patterns uh, that form profiles that are com uh, complementary to the profile of the part of the bristle that is under construction. So for example, initially, these microvilli form each individual line that you see is phyllodin labeled actin inside the microvilli. And they form these uh, triangular shapes that then um, are followed by a formation of a large microvillus, which is horseshoe shaped, mimicking the shape of the joint part. And then this uh, joint is uh, 
this uh, cup shaped structure is then flanked by a large microvillus that appears. And this microvillus becomes the major microvilli in the later stages. And this will be uh, consistent with the profile of the uh, shaft part. We quantified the, the occurrence of these individual stages, and uh, we uh, can see that during the development from 40 hours post fertilization to 64 hour post fertilization, uh, we see a succession of stages from stage one to stage two to stage three. So this told us that this is the correct uh, sequential order of uh, the uh, microvilli patterns. So we uh, raised antibodies against chitin synthase 3, and we um, uh, could localize by immunohistochemistry on the tips of these microvilli. For example, in this uh, micrograph, you can see uh, chitin synthase 3 signal on the uh, panel A. In panel B is the phylloidin labeled um, uh, uh, ketoblast cortex, which is forming in a horseshoe a shaped uh, uh, microvilli pattern, which would be consistent with the formation of the joint. And you can see that on the tip of these microvilli is the chitin synthase 3 uh, signal. So it seems like this morpho, uh, these morphological uh, transformations are coupled to the synthesis activity on their tips. So we looked uh, more carefully at these tips of the microvilli and we realized that these microvilli, uh, the tips of the microvilli are, uh, are uh, in, uh, in these uh, uh, early stages, uh, they are flanked to the, they appear to be uh, coupled to the uh, features on the bristle. So for example, in this micrograph, you can see that the first microvilli is associated to a tooth, the second is also associated to a tooth, so is the third associated to the tooth, but then the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and the, uh, the later ones are no longer associated to the tooth. Overall, for, for me, these triangular uh, assemblies. Uh, so we looked more carefully by serial block phase scanning electron microscopy, and we, uh, we saw that in these uh, uh, sections of the bristle, this is a section of the main part of the bristle, and this is the uh, uh, tooth of the, uh, that is being a section. And you can see that in the main part, there are these black dots that are consistently present throughout the sections um, of the uh, tomography. So we reconstructed these, uh, um, uh, reconstructed the structure of the bristle and the associated microvilli. And we obtain, and we realized that these black dots connect to form long channels that connect uh, individual features to the microvilli at the bottom uh, of the uh, of the bristle, and uh, they also these these channels follow the left right alignment of the uh, features of the bristle, such as the tooth on the blade. So left, right, left, right. This one is left. This one is on the right, and this one on the left, right, and so on. So this enabled us to formulate a hypothesis uh, uh, whereby. Uh, Initially, the microvilli uh, appear in absence of a feature, carrying possibly on the tip uh, chitin synthase 3. Uh, as they elongate, then the, the, uh, the feature is constructed um, uh, gradually. And when the synthesis of the feature is completed, then the microvilli's uh, elongation stops. Uh, then it starts to retract, leaving behind a channel that connects the uh, feature of uh, the features such as the tooth to the microvilli at the bottom. Then eventually the microvilli will disappear. But meantime, uh, new microvilli will have appeared uh, uh, and it will start creating uh, a new uh, tooth. Therefore, this is a cyclic process of uh, whereby uh, features are constructed serially onto the uh, elongating bristle. So as evidence, uh, the uh, dynamic microvilli are involved, we treated the animals with an inhibitor of uh, uh, active polymerization called cytogalaxin D. You can see in these uh, scanning electron microscopies uh, that uh, the ethanol treated animals develop normally these bristles with the uh, teeth that I explained uh, uh, extensively during the, this talk. However, upon treatment with the drug, the animals develop uh, uh, bristles 
that are lacking the teeth and also the joint is uh, malformed. Um, and this uh, phenotype can be rather easily uh, quantified by uh, looking at differential interference contrast micrographs and uh, the totality of the animals that were treated with the drug uh, show uh, this phenotype. So um, this leads me already to the um, uh, acknowledgements and I would like to acknowledge in particular people who did um, uh, um, uh, some preliminary work on uh, uh, Benjamin Vitali and uh, and uh, Harald Hausen. I uh, would like to thank our collaborators, Luis Lajalainez, Giuseppe Balduzzi, Christian Helmich, and uh, Joseph Fuso, uh, Jaromir Gumulek, uh, Ilya Belevich, and A.M. Jokitalo, uh, Graham Warren for some uh, for the advice, and uh, of course Florian Reibler. And I would like to thank the people related to the facilities. Uh, and the rest of the lab. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. That was a really interesting uh, kind of new mechanism. Do, do you think other um, arthropods develop chitinous structures in a similar way? Because there's all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Do you think this is a commonly recurring mechanism to, to shape chitin? Yeah, there's, uh, you often uh, read in things like uh, butterfly wing development or uh, on the development of bristles of uh, Drosophila, involvement of uh, microvilli, at least uh, uh, initially. Um, I think the peculiarity of uh, the bristle worms is the fact that they have these nanometric features that are, uh, that are highly, uh, that, are, that are sculpted with high fidelity onto them. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and these features are uh, not observed so far in other systems. So I think it they, there is something common about uh, microvilli being involved in morphogenesis at this scale, uh, but uh, I don't know to which extent this uh, system is, uh, um, is, uh, yeah, is existing also in other organisms. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Uh, we have a question uh, related to this one. How do you then get the different kinds of structures in the different sections of the bristles? Is there a change in the pattern of microvillus activity? And how is this coordinated? Uh, so the coordination of uh, changes in the patterns is something we are currently working on. Uh, so, and we, uh, and uh, let me read again. How do you get the different kinds of structures in different sections of the bristles? Yeah, so essentially this will depend on the uh, change in the morphology of the microvilli, which is templating uh, a synthesis surface where chitin synthesis 3 is, uh, is localizing, and uh, this will be enabling the synthesis of a feature according to the shape of the microvilli. Uh, yes. Um, but yeah, we still don't know about the signaling though. Thank you. 